Good afternoon. Shortly we'll hear an interesting lecture by Mr. Yossi Cohen on different roles of artificial intelligence in sport productions and broadcast. Artificial intelligence and deep learning are at the heart of sport video broadcast used for scouting, team game analysis, broadcast auto editing and more. This webinar is part of webinar series organized by Photonic Israel on various aspects of photonics. Photonics Israel operates within Engineer Association as a cluster of photonics entities. Our mission is to deepen the knowledge in photonics and to encourage cooperation both within Israel and these photonics entities in the world. We, are, we, um, um, we invite you to sign up to follow the activities we hold, which are published in our monthly newsletter. Per your request, the newsletter will deliver to you mail. My name is Shlomo Glazer. I am the manager of Photonics Israel. Mr. Cohen is a video and computer vision engineer for the last 30 years. He held BSc and MBA from the Technion. In the past, he held the R&D and management positions in Intel and in Qualcomm. Nowadays, Mr. Cohen is the CTO of DSPIP, a video and computer vision software consulting company. Their expertise are applied in the fields of autonomous systems, drones, early tech, and video analytics. Before we start, please note that the question and answer will be at the end of the lecture. Please post your questions on the Q&A tab. Mr. Cohen, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I'll share the presentation shortly. Okay. So um, the lecture today is about uh, deep learning in sport and e-sport, uh, where e-sport is actually gaming, uh, computer gaming, mobile gaming. Since the tools used in sport analytics are also applied the same way in e-sport. So what will we talk about today? Uh, we'll talk about the trends of AI in sport, what we can do in sport. Uh, we'll uh, talk about the different usages of analytics uh, driven by AI in sport. If it's a uh, personal coaching, uh, personal game analysis, team coaching and uh, team analysis, uh, expanding sport broadcast reach and creating a uh, higher a uh, premium uh, broadcast like in Intel Sport and games, uh, computer games analysis and summary in eSport. We'll also uh, discuss shortly the optics and camera used in uh, sport in, uh, in sport camera used in AI. Um, so what are the trends of AI in sport today? Uh, the basic broadcast method is broadcasting uh, video to television and sometimes broadcasting uh, games to mobile. But uh, that doesn't happen a lot. Uh, the usage of AI in sport is to uh, first uh, create cost reduction uh, by broadcasting games that were previously uh, not worth broadcasting due to the cost of broadcasting, not due to the, the cost of the rights of the game, like uh, what happened in the Premier League, but due to the cost of the teams and the cameras and the equipment sent to the game. There's no need to broadcast uh, our community or a city game uh, if it's not a first league game. It's not worth it. Uh, the cost is just too high. So uh, AI is used for cost reduction, uh, doing the entire broadcast without a cameraman, camera crew, uh, director, and the editor. Uh, another option is instead of cost reduction, creating premium broadcast and premium features like Intel Sport uh, or 360 broadcast, and we'll discuss it uh, shortly. So uh, AI is used for uh, both cost reduction or revenue increase. So that's one trend. 
uh, that AI is uh, expanding the broadcasting. Another is expanding the reach, not just broadcasting into TV and streaming, but into social. But social has different needs than TV. There is a need to summarize the entire game to one minute in YouTube, uh, 30 seconds in Instagram, or six seconds in TikTok. So we need to understand how to do it and to do it for all games, not just uh, Premier League games or um, um, games that are watched by many people, but also local games. And to do so, we will need some kind of a director, editor, um, which will add the effect and cut the video. So AI is used uh, to find the highlight and create those uh, short clips. Another uh, trend of AI is instead of expanding the reach is to personalize the video. Creating a video of just your personal favorite players. If it's Messi or LeBron or some, someone, that, some player that uh, you knew in high school and nobody cared about. So we personalize your uh, videos and video clips and summaries. You don't need to watch the entire uh, broadcast, just the parts you like. So all of those trends, if it's personalization or expanding uh, the social reach and creating uh, game summaries requires AI to understand the game and requires sometimes a, a, a rig of cameras without a cameraman and director. So there is a need for a good understanding of the game. What is happening right now? Where is the ball? What is the referee uh, doing? What is uh, my favorite player doing? What is the end result? What is the current result? Uh, from which angle to shoot? And that's what AI is doing. So for cost reduction, we need to eliminate the cost of the crew and the multi-camera uh, rig, the multi-cameras, and the editor and the director. AI is used to understand the game, to zoom in on the right region. What is the right region? Where to zoom the camera? Sometimes it's where the ball, sometimes it's not. Sometimes there is a fight on the other end of the, of the court uh, that the camera should look at, instead of where the ball is. And after understanding and zooming, we would like, in some cases, to create highlights. Uh, solutions of this is done by companies uh, mostly known as Pixelot and some other companies that are doing it is uh, Vio and Spido. <coughs> those are the cameras uh, used by those companies. I think that the most known solution, as I said, is by Pixelot. Uh, it is used to record as a game for later uh, broadcasting or for later watching or for analysis and also to stream the games to all different devices. Um, it has the capabilities of automatic zooming and tracking. If you remember, there was some, uh, uh, some bug a few months ago when the camera was zooming in on the uh, bold uh, or the ball coach instead of the ball. So that sometimes happens in case of AI. Uh, other companies, as I said, is the uh, Vio, this green camera, and Spido. But as I said, Pixelot is the most known company. Um, so another trend, instead of reducing the cost, is to create premium features. Uh, just a second, let's see a video by Pixelot.
real-time game breakdowns of live video and official data include shot charts, heat maps, and detailed game, team, and player stats. The platform offers a variety of editing and self-coding tools so you can easily review plays and coach your team better both during and after the game. This all-in-one cost-effective solution also allows you to telestrate, tag, and add notes to each move and watch your upcoming opponents' matches on the video exchange platform. Pixelot produces and analyzes thousands of games every single day from over 130 leagues and tournaments around the globe. Join the AI revolution in sports. Okay, that's a very nice video indeed. Um, so, uh, those are uh, on the right the, uh, the cameras by Pixelot and those by Veo and Spido. <coughs> um, okay, so another trend is instead of reducing the cost, is actually uh, create a solution which uh, costs much more. Since, as we can see, those are very, very special cameras uh, with very high resolution and other devices attached to them for calibration. And the need is to capture volumetric video, not regular 2D video, but 3D video uh, that is created by many cameras that are accurately placed and calibrated around the game. Uh, it is used mostly in football games and basketball and soccer games. Uh, so in this case, we create some kind of a 3D uh, scene of the game instead of a 2D image. Uh, this is used to spin the point of view to any angle uh, desired by the director or the user, probably the director, and also to look at the game from the point of view of the player itself, himself. So we could look on how the uh, field would look like if I was uh, inside of the football game uh, passing between players. Uh, this is one example of it. This turning around of the game is only enabled uh, by, uh, by the volumetric capturing of the game done by those specialized cameras. And of course, software. Oh, sorry. Sorry. And let's return to our lecture. So this is, uh, this is used to create special features, which are premium features that uh, the broadcaster could charge premium for, or uh, drive revenues or uh, uh, attraction from clients due to those uh, features. Another feature is 360 video. Uh, this feature is used, was, uh, was very sought after uh, five years ago, and it's uh, currently in decline, as I see it, since I hear less about it. Uh, it still exists, but it's not hyped as uh, three, four years ago. And as we call another trend that we discussed, instead, instead of increasing revenues or reducing uh, the cost of, uh, the, of the team, which creates a game, is expanding the reach on social networks. So to expand the reach on social networks, I would like to summarize the game and output it in form of a one minute or 30 seconds. So I need to better understand the games. Of course, that I could do it manually, but I couldn't do it manually for all possible games. I would prefer that an AI would do. Another option is to uh, place the highlights uh, before the videos uh, in uh, all sorts of web pages uh, to attract people to view the games. So how do I summarize the game? I need to understand the games. What are the technologies used for game summarization? I took this uh, game summarization from uh, 
uh, Minitly, one, one of the leading companies in uh, uh, sport game and e-sports summarization. <clears throat> First of all, by action detection, I could see a shot to the basket, a, a goal, um, or a foul. I could understand the crowd reaction when they are clapping, when they are cheering or yelling. I could do it by a saliency, someone that would understand the computer vision or otherwise by, as we can see in the lower image, by understanding where the action is. And by understanding it, we could understand what happened on the game. There are other technologies which we'll review later. Another company is company which does game summarization is uh, WCS Sport and the, the end results are the same. Lots of, uh, lots of clips uh, uh, which are spread across the social networks and sometimes those clip are, clips are personalized to uh, your favorite uh, player. For example, show me all the shots of LeBron James or all the goals of Messi or show me just game summaries of the last weekend or just uh, this current game summary of Barcelona. So all of this uh, could be done in technologies by WCS Sport and also by Minitly. Another option is the personalization. As I said, uh, create a summary of only the games and players a uh, person would like. Um, another personalization option is, uh, for example, to uh, show me my friends actually do co-viewing or to uh, replace uh, the, um, uh, to replace the, um, the commentator, for example. Uh, this technology is done by Texel, and let's review the video. It's a very nice uh, video which explains the technology of uh, personalized viewing. It is mostly used in sport, of course. Texel, experience as a service platform, enables content providers to deliver personalized shared experiences personalized. to each viewer through seamless interaction with content and between users. Each viewer is getting their own personal stream on any device or network. Choose your own camera angles and commentator Invite friends to join in. Include stats and social feeds you follow. Or even get the next generation of targeted ads. Texel's platform provides a unique point of view to each viewer by first ingesting an unlimited variety of sources of unbounded size. It then breaks down these massive streams of data into smaller elements, reconstructs a tailored stream, and delivers it all the way to the viewer in real time. Okay, that's enough. Um, so that's personalization. So let's review some of the companies which does analytics and coaching in sport. Uh, what uh, analytics and coaching is used? Uh, in sport, it is uh, used for scouting, uh, like uh, Scout.io. Uh, in single player analytics uh, for both performance, uh, coaching, and scouting, and in team analytics uh, to uh, boost the team performance and sometimes even for betting. Um, in eSport, um, analytics is used for game summaries, creating clips uh, for tournaments to understand who won and what are the conditions he won in. Uh, to better understand the players and to better match the players. Actually, by better matching the players in tournament, I could create higher revenues for the tournament organizers. Personal coaching. Uh, this is uh, from AI Scout. I would understand the speed of the player, the agility of the player, uh, the speed of the ball and other parameters in which a single uh, football player would be judged upon. So uh, this technology is used for scouting. It, is, it could be used uh, for scouting in football, in basketball, in uh, tennis analytics and coaching, and uh, in swimming tool analysis and coaching. 
What are the technologies used? Uh, regular computer vision or classic computer vision, we are doing calibration of the cameras uh, to remove perspective, uh, to understand where the field is, uh, to do registration, uh, field line detection, sometimes this is also used in deep learning since not all of the field lines are always white. Deep learning, we are usually doing object uh, detectors for ball, basket, goal, and so on. We are doing face recognition to understand where is a, a specific player, if I want to create, to create a later clip by that player. Um, it could be used by the number on his shirt, but sometimes uh, using face recognition. We are doing action recognition. Action recognition is done on uh, an image sequence, actually a video, and not on a single image like the object detectors. Uh, action detection is, for example, to uh, uh, find where is a shot happening, where I'm throwing the ball to the basket, uh, to see a goal, a pass, a block. Um, sometimes I could see actions of uh, gestures, for example, timeout. Um, I'm taking out skeletons, as we could see in this image. Uh, sometimes it is used for agility, uh, sometimes for tennis. Uh, we are doing saliency. Saliency is an image I shown before, uh, at minute least slide see where the action is happening, what are the areas that a user would look at in the video. Uh, we are doing analysis of sound of the audience, for example, um, and we are doing tracking, tracking of the ball. Um, detecting the ball is not enough, since we are not knowing, we, we, just by uh, detecting the ball, we don't know the actual position in 3D space of the ball. Since the ball could be on the ground in one place and it would look the same as if it's on a higher level in the air on another place in a football. Uh, usually this, this uh, problem is mostly seen in uh, football games. So it's not enough to detect the ball, we need also to track it and afterwards to, um, to figure out what is his speed and in tennis is spin, uh, uh, if it's out, if it's not an out. Example of tennis uh, analytics and coaching. Um, uh, in, this, uh, in this solution, there are two cameras, one for each half of the field. Uh, there is a real-time analysis uh, of computers and mounted next to the cameras. We could see the entire solution here. It's actually very small. Uh, and it provides real-time analysis of the game and no need to send it to the cloud for analysis and wait. It also provides streaming of the game and rewinds and uh, reviewing the last play. Uh, what it could do, it could uh, detect the ball, ball speed, spin, net clearance, how high it's above the net, uh, the ball location, it's an out, game recording, and mobile app. You could see a video of this solution. Very nice solution. Okay. 
Um, another solution uh, is uh, by respect uh, basketball coaching. Uh, this solution is different from solution like Pixelot, uh, which records the game and analyzes the game. In this solution, we only analyze uh, the shot to the basket, how good the shot or, or to the basket are. Um, so uh, it provides shot statistics, deflections, and advices on how to improve uh, the solution. We can see here uh, if it added. Uh, automatically understand if uh, it was a swish, clear net, an air ball, bounce in, bounce out, uh, create a statistics and uh, provide advices. For example, in this case, it would tell me you are going too much to the right and you should uh, change that by two inches. For example, uh, we can see a video of the solution. So we understand that technology. Uh, football team analysis, actually there are a lot of open source software here and a lot of analysis going on because there's a lot to, to understand in, um, in uh, football games. Um, actually detecting the ball uh, is quite hard. It's basically a point you can see it here right here, it's so tiny. Sometimes it's on uh, a white line, sometimes it's obscured, it uh, changes its speed and acceleration very fast, sometimes from one frame to the next, it changes the acceleration, direction. It's very tiny, uh, we don't see it well from, uh, from a wide angle. Uh, which is mostly as uh, it, it, uh, it is viewed. Uh, so tracking the ball is quite hard. Um, touch detection, who touched the ball? Who is actually owning the ball and if it's uh, one team or another? Uh, detecting which players belongs to each team. Actually here it's quite easy, but sometimes there's a the referee, uh, as the line referees, uh, and it's hard to detect them. Sometimes we need to do personal uh, player uh, detection that is done uh, either by the faces or by the numbers, if possible. Step counting, that's the basics. And then we could analyze what game is going on. Where is the game pressure? If there is a game pressure, how each player handles this pressure? scoring of that player, and so on and so on. There's a lot to be done here. Uh, there's an example here in the link, you could view as uh, a presentation later, of uh, strategies for uh, computer games by computers. We are using reinforced learning to teach computers uh, to play football. And it's, it has the uh, average result, a uh, computer could win in uh, easy cases or mid cases, but not in hard cases. So that's a nice uh, open source Google research link that I included in the presentation. Um, swimming uh, anal analytics is uh, somewhat the same as uh, football scouting. 
uh, or um, basketball scouting. Uh, it provides analysis of the motion, the accuracy of the motion, count strokes, breathing, and so on. Uh, we could see a short video about it right now. The music is very, is, is uh, much the same in all those videos. It's about knowing how you swim, stroke by stroke, lap by lap, so you can swim better, smarter, and it's good. And we can see flip turns, time, amount of strokes. There's always a mobile app. Okay, let me the presentation. Okay, a little bit about the optics and technology trends in, uh, in sport. Um, some trends in sport broadcast. There was sport broadcast before there was um, AI in sport. So the trends starting from the 90s is uh, the move to uh, full HD. 1080p in the late 90s, it requires replacement of cameras, screen encoders, and in some cases, the standard themselves, moving from standard definition to full HD definition. Virtual advertisement in sport, it requires cameras, and in some solutions, special equipment. Uh, it didn't uh, catch uh, but today it is used for analytics, for example, the virtual 10 feet line in football or um, uh, showing which uh, swimmer is the first, uh, done first time in uh, China's Olympic, in Shanghai Olympic. Uh, 3D TV in sport, it was very hyped uh, in something like uh, 2010, 11, 12 years ago, but it failed. Uh, somewhat like the 360 video technologies, which also failed, uh, let's say, two years ago. It's not a complete failure, but it didn't uh, answer to the hype it created first, first. 4K video, we are using it today, so it did catch up, it did succeed. It requires replacement of cameras, screen encoders, and of course, standard. 360 videos, which is not so great, not, so, not doing so great today. Um, technologies for expanding the reach to social networks in game analytics, finding highlights, uh, automatic highlights editing, click generation. Um, so what are the hardware technologies used in AI in sport today? I'm talking about uh, special camera rigs used in, in cases like in uh, Pixelot or, um, or Spider. Okay, uh, it is also used by other companies. So each company requires different technologies. For example, if it's for swimming, it would be some kind of rigs against water and special lenses used in water and uh, all sorts of ISP and color filtering for the water because uh, water has all sorts of uh, uh, color, uh, color dis disformities. So uh, the technologies used mostly are 4K camera resolutions, uh, usually 30 FPS to 60 FPS. Uh, it's a multi-camera rig, uh, usually. Uh, the cameras are wide angle. It is mostly long range for tennis courts or football uh, fields or soccer fields. It has broadcast or near broadcast quality sensors and ISP. ISP is a device uh, which performs the uh, color and uh, color balancing, buyer and everything that creates a good image from the sensed image. 
It is usually global shutter uh, cameras uh, to avoid smearing. Uh, the lenses, the lenses are very accurate color, uh, uh, very accurate lenses, uh, which avoids all sorts of color disformities and shadings. In some cases, depending on the equipment used, we are doing, uh, we are adding other devices. For example, I am used. Uh, in some AI in sport, uh, uh, the players uh, you are using some kind of vest with uh, IMUs or GPS tracking uh, to track their, uh, either the speed, acceleration and agility or position in the game. Also, uh, in indoor gaming, there is some kind of uh, indoor GPS sensors. In some cameras used for um, spot advertising in-game on the field itself, and in case of Intel Sport, there, there is a requirement for exact calibration equipment, and of course, there is outside uh, casing for all those cameras, even anti-water casing for uh, swimming. Esport and video summarization and clipping. Um, it's basically the same understanding, almost the same understanding as required in a sport a clip a summarization. We'll start with a demo. Since it's a very nice uh, demo, we'll start with a demo and then discuss the technology. Okay, I think that's enough. So, what are the technologies used in eSport? Uh, analytics, uh, game understanding, and uh, video clip, video summarization. The video clips are usually generated for social networks, so the player could brag about his uh, achievement, and uh, so create traction for the game. Also, uh, the analytics is used by tournament organizer to better understand, to first understand who won. Usually, tournament organizers does not have, if it's not the game, uh, the game creator does not have an API for the game, so they don't even know who won. So they need both players to, or all the players to agree who won before they are moving uh, the victorious player to the next level. So what are the technologies used? The technologies are basically the same uh, in detection and analytics uh, for, all, uh, for all those options for analytics, for uh, game summaries and clipping. Uh, there is a first layer of detector. We could detect if there is a text. For example, you won, you killed, you killed by. So on a first layer, we are detecting the text. The second layer, uh, reads the text. It's, it's a higher level of detector which requires more processing, for example, OCR or face detection. Um, so the first layer are very uh, fast and inaccurate, and the second layer provides much more understanding of the game. So there is a first layer of detectors when a text is detected, it is passed to the second layer of detectors, or when there is a face detection, it is uh, provided for face recognition. Um, 
uh, if there is a gunshot on the first layer detected, I could pass it to a second layer to detect which gun shot it, and so on. When all the uh, events and the objects are detected, they are uh, moved to a scoring and grading engine. Uh, the detection are creating a group for uh, some kind of a higher level of activity detection, for example, a kill, uh, a kill from a headshot, a kill from a knife, blowing up a, a jeep, and so on. Uh, the scoring and grading engine uh, reviews the entire game and grades the parts that the user would most like to include in a clip. Uh, the, the cuts of the game that other users would react to and like. And those, uh, those are passed into an editing and effect service, which creates the clip uh, from the edit list, passed uh, from the scoring and grading engine. The edit list is basically a list of uh, cuts to take from the video. And it is passed along with the effects required uh, between each, each part and the graphics effects. Uh, and this creates the nice clip we saw right now. Um, it is also used for analytics. So all those detectors are, are passed into a, an analytics engine, which understands this, uh, who won, who killed, how many, for which team, in what, in what places uh, each player uh, behaves the best or uh, gets the most scores. And besides analytics and understanding who won, it could be uh, used, as I said, for matching your, uh, the best player for you to match against. So I could uh, create more attraction for the tournament. I wouldn't like to create matching between Player one, a lower level player and a higher level player, because those players would get frustrated. It would be too hard and too easy, and they wouldn't play much. I would like to create uh, the most uh, equal in terms for those players to attract them to continue and play more, and so get more revenues. So as I said, there are two levels of detectors. Usually, if it's a text or a shock detector, a second layer is specific object detectors, activity detectors, and OCRs. Uh, automatic editing done by a scoring and grading engine passed into a video clip template. And um, then editing a service, which, uh, or an editing server, uh, which does the uh, editing. What I would like to do, uh, if I'm uh, just a second, I think I'm not. Just a second, my computer is not connected to the power. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, so what I would like to get, for example, in some kind of uh, a wish list spot analytics SDK. Um, so uh, for devices, I would like to have a small devices, a small device in the field, in the tennis court, in the swimming pool, uh, next to the basket that would acquire the video either by 3D cameras or 2D cameras and understand what happens. So I would like to run it on all sorts of uh, devices. Usually today it's uh, Jetson Nano, MX, AGX, and uh, either store the video uh, inside of it or uh, send it to the cloud. I would like to do, I would like to perform real-time analytics. And my preference for doing so in a in some of the companies I showed you is uh, to use NVIDIA DeepStream technology, uh, which is used for uh, video analytics, um, and then create a, a small object detection. Uh, there are, of course, ball detectors, but the ball detectors would not fit, uh, for example, a, 
the standard uh, ball detector or in Coco would not fit a golf ball or a tennis ball and sometimes not even a basketball or a football if it's uh, taken from a wide angle. So I would like to create a customized small object detector and tracker. I would like uh, to have some kind of uh, real-time real -time skeleton extractor and pulse analysis, and that's not easy in a very small IoT device like uh, Jetson Nano to do so in real time. And I would like to have an action detector, for example, a shot detector, or a block uh, detector, or a foul detector as a, an activity detector in that SDK. I would like to have a sensor analysis from IMU to detect if it's a walk, a run, or a jump, if I have uh, some kind of devices on the players. Uh, when I'm in, in the cloud, I would like that uh, sport SDK either to work on AWS or Azure, uh, on NVIDIA instances with GPUs to work better for video analysis. I would like them to gather video or uh, metadata from multi points from cameras and sensor to aggregate all those videos and metadata inside the cloud and to do further analysis and validation of the IoT results by heavier modules. For example, in an IoT device that is running 30 or 60 FPS, I couldn't uh, do proper small object analysis. So I would do some trade off for speed, I would uh, sacrifice accuracy for speed. On the cloud on the other end, I don't have to do so. So in some cases, I would like to do another step of analysis in the cloud with heavier uh, deep learning models. In the cloud, I would also do the clip generation. If I'm doing the clip generation uh, to, uh, to highlight detection of the video games or eSport or computer game to do the highlight detection and uh, video summarization and from that to generate the clip. So that's how I would like to create uh, an idealized uh, sport analytics uh, software. Um, it would answer, I think, most of the requirements of such companies. And that's basically it. Uh, do you have any questions? Questions? Yes, you do have uh, one question mm -hmm. on Q&A. Can you read it? Uh, I, if using AI technology in sport can help improve management of sports sites and clubs. For example, if AI technology could improve management of stadium, sports school, organization, and sport events, um, okay. Um, organization of sports school. Uh, it is already used in scouting, uh, this technology. For example, uh, AI Scout or Scout AI, which I mentioned before, uh, it is already used for scouting in basketball and in football. Uh, it is used in also in sports school uh, to uh, uh, coach the different players and uh, we saw that also in uh, respect for example there are videos by respect the same company that i'm showing here uh, how it is used in little leagues uh, by uh, youth basketball players to improve their shots uh, uh, it is used also in tennis courts um, uh, also to create coaching in sports school now for, um, for uh, fans or fans club, um, I'm not sure it is mostly relevant for advertising or other things. I'm, I'm looking at AI technology in, in respect to computer vision. What computer visions, cameras, I use could be doing on the players and less on how to um, it's, it's not, it's, it's a very important uh, role to, to create better uh, fans or fans club, but I'm, I'm not sure how this computer vision technology could help there. 
um, and my field is computer vision and deep learning technology. So I'm not sure about how to better organize those events or better sell tickets to those games. Uh, the management, um, actually Fantasy League, I think it's the best simulation and uh, of, of a sport club management, which player to buy. And in this case, I think that AI and reinforced learning could do better than uh, most most uh, coaches today, it's the reason we are using, in my opinion, uh, human coaches and scouts is just legacy. We are obsolete. Computers will do the dog job better already by now. Uh, as we can see by fantasy, I think that fantasy link computers, which are trained with reinforced learning, uh, could, uh, could beat any player. Any, any coach uh, for uh, scouting and coaching. Uh, for for uh, inside the game itself, uh, as I showed uh, in Google Football, uh, they are using reinforced learning uh, to provide the best attack for each scenario. Uh, as I said, it is not good as uh, human players. It is good for... Uh, low complexity to mid complexity scenarios and it fails in high complexity scenarios. So as, as a decision maker for the football player itself or the team itself in football, in a specific game in real time, computers are lacking and humans are still currently better. I hope that will improve the computers. What are the next goals for, for the AI uh, mm -hmm. concerning sport activities? Again, I, I couldn't quite hear you. What, what are the next goals uh, that the AI people are tackled down in order to provide more better solution or new solution or new tackle new goals? Uh, okay, in... uh, the, the directions I'm, I'm currently seeing is how to provide you with the best alluring news uh, of games you would like. I think that in some cases we, we, we have short attention spans. We want to see the entire game not by 90 minutes, but by six seconds or 30 seconds, and the AI is doing it quite well. Uh, sometimes I would like to view the games with my friend, or I hate the old commentators in, in the old people TV, and I would like to replace him uh, with, with, uh, the cool, with a cool rapper or with a cool uh, gamer that would uh, better annotate the football game like he's annotating uh, Fortnite, okay? Uh, it's much better. Uh, I think that um, sport annotators are there in the last 50 years, as I see, at least in Israel, and uh, there are, I, I, the, 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 in the time of PDP-11 computers, they didn't change the commentator or the commentator style, and it's time to change it. I want my own commentator in the game, so why not replace it in, in, to my commentator for each, uh, for each viewer? And the technology by Texel is doing it, and I think it is uh, great. So that's a good direction. Um, uh, that's all from the side of broadcasting, also the low, low cost broadcasting that we already uh, thoroughly discussed. Uh, in, in the performance analysis, I think we are doing great in basketball shots and uh, in tuning the personal uh, performance, the, the a personal player performance. Still, AI is not used uh, for a complete team analysis uh, very well. There are some solutions. I think that it could, uh, those solutions could improve uh, for team, team coaching and not just a single player coaching. Single player coaching is how you could shoot the, the ball better to the basket, uh, throw the ball better. Uh, team, team, um, team analysis and coaching is how the team itself could uh, do better. As I said, there are solutions for that, all sorts of vests uh, with indoor GPS, which analyze it with cameras. 
and it, it could improve. We are not doing so well in, in the team itself, in the team coaching. So those are the directions I see. Okay, are there any more questions? Please don't hesitate. The expert is in front of you. Any, any deep learning or camera questions about how to detect on the end or how to uh, make analysis of a new type of sport? I didn't talk about golf analysis and other sports not so popular in Israel. Maybe I should have uh, talked about cricket, which is uh, a very... A very watched game but not here so we are um, we are less aware of it and I'm not aware if there are any AI uh, solutions for cricket for example. okay I think it was a, a great uh, lecture I, I by myself enjoyed very much so thank you, thank you very much and uh, we hope to see you again thank you thank you bye bye you